I don't have much time. I'm just going to keep this as simple as possible. One Piece chapter 974 was heat. It was actually pretty good. Like reading it, doing the reaction, I got spoiled in the chapter. So the reaction initially was just, it didn't hit me. Reread like three times. And this was a good chapter. Uh, the translations were a bit off, a bit iffy, I would say, because there were even things that were said a couple times. But okay, the point of this is to give you the, my gist of the chapter. I really liked how they finished the Kyoshiro and Kumurasaki stuff, where last chapter I said that they were always working together. Obviously, Kyoshiro asked Kumurasaki, hey, are you ready? And he, we see here, he told her to carry you around blood with her all the time just in case anything were to happen they would separate her from orochi by death and that's what happened and then you know she went off and then Kanjo or kamazo was chasing her all that different stuff i do think there are different sides to hiyori or kumurasaki whoever you want to call her because she's been pretending for so long i don't know who the true person is because we saw a bit of her when she met zoro she was really subservient she was really soft but then when someone disrespected odin we saw how she reacted to orochi so who is the real hiyori but besides that that's not even important or relevant right now let's talk about the trader and the build up for it again upon reading it initially it wasn't that fantastic but there's a lot there there's a lot there in which i loved seeing kaido and orochi talk and have a conversation because we always wondered like what was the extent of their relationship like was kaido only using orochi it seems like there it's an actual alliance of course orochi said that you know to cp0 that nobody can touch him because kaido is backing him and it seems like kaido of course he has vested interest in orochi and with everything going on in wano with the weapons and the factories orochi because of the funds he had made it easier for him to join kaido for kaido to join him so he talked about that as well but he got into it about about the traitor that they have the traitor in their midst now people may complain that it's been you know a reveal of kiyoshiro then a reveal of the traitor back to back it seems like oh they're just trying to get us information but i don't think there's an issue with that these are things that's been built up for so long from the beginning of not even wano even in dress rosa so these things being revealed i really enjoy it but orochi talks about the traitor and in a way this is the perfect person for this again if you don't know and you're watching this i don't understand the spoiler alert the traitor was conjuro is conjuro i guess i went back and looked at chapter was it 962 i think when conjuro was first found by odin and they said that he was persecuted in the past because of stealing hair but based on orochi he was persecuted in the past because he was a kurizomi well his parents died on stage and it makes sense that this person who has no emotions he's playing a role like he's continuously playing a role and he's performing Forming. But he even said that he shared emotions with Kinemon and the other scabbards. He said he didn't hate them. But before that, it seemed like Orochi was, again, the mastermind behind it because he even gave Kondro his devil fruit, it seems like. And in hindsight, it was all there. Like, the person that could accurately or conveniently, effectively deliver information to Orochi was somebody that could actually draw birds and things like that. This is something that was right in front of us. But, I mean, we've talked about this before, like, in previous videos months ago, where we said that Kondro makes the most sense. Of course, recently, Raizo had been doing some things where you, you suspected Raizo but Kondro was the one who it didn't seem like he was fleshed out at all we didn't know much about Kondro other than well he was persecuted in the past for here so with us not knowing much about him different reactions he had and my guy Clyde compiled a list on my reaction and I'll just go through this list really quickly and before I do my analysis on Sunday I'll make sure I'll reread I'll try to reread Zoe some of Dress Rosa and Wano so that I can have a bird's eye view of all the things that were there with Kondro but this is what Clyde said a comprehensive list of the hints Oda put throughout the story. He endangered the whole alliance with his net in Dressrosa, was stressed about what Usopp was going to do with his drawing, was absolutely relaxed when he was found in captivity. Dofi gave him no bounty. Kondra put his hands over Kinemon's when they were climbing Zo so that he could not see the monkey. Was the only one with Kinemon to know if Raizo was in Zo, but not where Raizo was hidden, which is exactly why Jack could go to Zo, but couldn't go directly where Raizo was. Was the only one whose reaction to seeing the Kazuki clan loyal followers 20 years later wasn't shown. Was the only one who didn't help a single time during the recruit of Samurai rise in wano literally sent carrier pigeons the second he traveled to the future as we see in chapter 920 was told where hiyori was kept hidden alongside the other scabbards was said in odin's flashback to have been persecuted in the past in line with his kurozomi background stopped shinobu from stopping law's reckless rescue of his friends in later chapters hawkins says that he knew that he was coming and was prepared heard nami robin and shinobu's talk about the bath in chapter 934 the very next chapter hawkins barges in the bath knowing rebels were there saw that yasui was still alive in the very next chapter Yasui was captured and crucified so Clyde compiled a very extensive list again I'll try to reread 
to get a better understanding or just go back to see how obvious some of these things were. Again, this is a, an amazing list. Thank you, Clyde. Condra being a traitor. I mean, everything he said made me care about him more. And these are things Oda does after showing the true side of a character. It makes you connect a bit more with the character. Again, Condra isn't relatable because again, it said he didn't have any emotions. He was just playing a role in this story. Like he was playing a role as a scabbard. That was his job. And again, he cared about them. He had a, he had real emotions with them apparently he didn't hate them it was just feeding orochi information because he was kanjo kurozomi so he was the perfect person to play this even orochi said that you know his loyalty and everything he was doing was creepy and weird and coming from orochi that's saying something so kanjo a true anomaly there was no benefit for him other than just playing the role and looking for a place to die and i think it's interesting the people around orochi both kaido and kanjo they're looking for a place to die seemingly a bit premature to explore that parallel and those connections but thought that was interesting because again seeing your parents die on stage i get that i guess that was a trigger where you felt like you know what i I don't have any purpose anymore. I just want to die. So I loved it. I, I think it's perfect. It's not a jump. It's not a, an ass pull uh, based on the story. Condra was the person that we suspected, but Condra called them out, said that you guys didn't even want to know. Kinemon even said in this chapter, I don't even want to know who it is. And Kiku had to call him out and say, yo, you're the person that's supposed to stabilize this and say, we have to find this person. And I feel like that should have happened so long ago. This should have been a priority, maybe not by Kinemon because he got sent to the future or I mean, it should have been a priority for all of them. But even Kondra said, well, Inarashi, you suspected something. You started becoming a bit more suspicious, but you didn't do anything. And that was the problem with the scabbers. Even Odin, Kaido told them, I may have somebody amongst you, but nobody did anything. So Kondra said, you know what? Enough of the charade. I'm the guy. Like, what are you going to do now? Like, at this point, you guys are about to die. You don't even know if I can draw. You don't know my last name. You know nothing about me. All you know is that I'm Kondra, one of the scabbards. So... I like the fact that Kondra called him out and said, what are you doing? Like, you guys didn't even try. But I think it goes back to loyalty and honor where if they suspected themselves, then they would lose trust in each other because then you're looking around like, I don't know who the traitor is. But then uh, I said in my reaction that they should have set it up where even the information about Hiyori, maybe you tell everybody somewhere different. So then it's revealed later the person or where Orochi says that Hiyori is or where Orochi probably sends like some troops or something. Then it shows who the person would be because then everybody had a different location. It would reveal the traitor. But I mean, this way is fine too. Just calling them out saying, it's me. What are you going to do? Can I of course struck Kondro cut his head off but that was a drawing so Kondro he could actually draw and he was keeping that close to his vest it's, it's honestly perfect it's honestly perfect how it was revealed my favorite part of the chapter again is the supernova trio pulling up because they thought it was over it looks like Jack's ship I think but Anyway, Kaido's men, they're pulling up. They're saying, well, Orochi said we should expect a small boat. And there it is, a small boat. But out of nowhere comes a submarine, Luffy, and a kid. And again, seeing the panel of those three just goes back to Sabodi vibes where you see all three. And a lot of people have speculated since Sabodi that these three would cause major issues for everyone in the new world. And now it's coming to fruition. Of course, Law, Luffy, and Kid, they've had their fair share of shit in the new world. Luffy, a bit more successful than the others, but they have done their thing law of course with the hearts and becoming a shichibukai then betraying them then address rosa stuff luffy his accolades you know we don't, we don't even have to mention and kid from challenging all the yonko ultimately failing every time but having the balls to go against all these Yonko. The only person we don't know he's interacted with at all is Blackbeard, but maybe that's to come. But this was a nostalgic panel. This is something I've been waiting for for a long time. This is where I think Wano reaches its like its, its point where people start jumping back on the bandwagon because it's all people jumping off for a little bit. And then again, this is within the community from what I see. People were not interested in the backstory as much. And again, it could be the loud minority. Uh, but I think this chapter, from what I've seen, it's been an overall positive reaction. People are enjoying seeing the monster trio, I keep saying monster trio the supernova trio again luffy law and the kid i expect major things from kid i was really hyped at that part i was like oh my god law is showing up in the submarine kid and luffy is going to be an amazing time so really can't wait for chapter 975 no break so that's good uh, again i gotta get out of here so guys like the video be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brago dace follow me on instagram at brago d ace shout out to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much thank you so much the one piece anime should be returning this week so again raid suit sanji should be incoming that should be a fun reaction make sure to like the video 
and subscribe uh, once the official comes out. Of course, a video will be coming as well. I might make a video on Conjurer before then. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Again, I got to go like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.